as hydroponics, as 3D ponics. Um, the speaker will introduce himself. But this does seem a very creative combination, hydroponics and 3D printing. So um, let's take a look at what, um, what they're working on. My name is Charlie, uh, and I'm the communications director with 3D Ponics. Uh, I have a background in social work, uh, of all things, and a huge passion in technology. And merging the two, uh, we believe that helping people with the use of new emerging technologies is definitely the way to go. And uh, with that, I'll uh, talk to you a little bit about what 3D Ponics is, what our vision ultimately is, and how we're getting there one step at a time. So 3D Ponics, uh, the name itself kind of is self-explanatory. It's taking 3D printing, uh, adding hydroponic gardening, and making it into one cohesive unit. So we're based out of uh, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Uh, that's where our headquarters is. And we're a bootstrap startup. So we uh, have essentially started everything ourselves with the notion of making it into something that's, uh, that's helpful for everyone involved. Uh, we started off as a 3D printing company that um, you know, designed uh, custom pieces, printed them off, sold them online. And through that process, we found what we really wanted to do was we wanted to find a practical application for the use of a 3D printer uh, in indoor environments. And the idea of growing plants or vegetables hydroponically really appealed to us, especially since we're from Canada and it's winter like eight months out of the year. So growing indoors is a viable option. Ultimately, our vision is to have or to create the most effective gardening system made for people by people to use here on Earth and, and the great beyond, whether it's Mars uh, or whether it's on the International Space Station. Now that's kind of a grand vision, but we aim to achieve that uh, from our core values. And the core of 3D Ponics is rooted in open source concepts. So we believe that we're not that bright, and that we need everyone's help in order to achieve our ultimate vision. And so everything that we've done in 3D Ponics, and everything that we plan on doing in the future, is all open source. So all of our design files are available for free and can be customized at anyone's whim. Any additional ideas and new innovations are greatly encouraged. And I'll get into a little bit more detail about some examples of people's innovations within 3D Ponics. Now please bear in mind, we've only been in operation for uh, just under a year. So 3D Ponics itself, uh, we, uh, when we launched, we launched with a Kickstarter campaign which was successfully funded. And through that campaign, we had three primary goals that we wanted to use the funding for. The first, naturally, was to launch a community-based website. Um, you know, that's the whole crux of what 3D Ponics is uh, based around, is getting people involved, not only in 3D printing, but get them involved in indoor gardening, eco-sustainability, et cetera, et cetera, and having a community-based website where people could bounce ideas off of each other, share their own systems, post new upgraded parts, uh, we thought was crucial. So we wanted to create a website that fostered that community aspect. Uh, in addition to that, our major target in terms of a revenue platform comes in the, in the form of schools. And not so much bringing the systems into the schools, but developing and implementing curriculums around hydroponics and 3D printing. One of the obstacles that we saw with uh, teachers in our uh, neck of the woods in Canada was they were exceptionally interested in 3D printing technology and they wanted to get 3D printers into their schools, but they needed some justification for the cost. It was a little too much, uh, the technology was a little too new, and uh, they needed to have something that they could pitch uh, in terms of getting that budget uh, allocation. And so with the idea of 3D Ponics as a curriculum, factoring in the design, implementation of the systems, the printing and manufacturing of them, and then tying in science, education, technology, agriculture, sustainability, this became an ultimate 
package that we could put together. So with the funding that we have received from Kickstarter and the funding that we're looking to receive from, from, uh, from seed donations is to help make this package more robust. And recently, we just signed uh, or inked an agreement with the Rhode Island STEM Center in order to get this type of curriculum, uh, you know, as a platform throughout all schools in, in America. The third item that we really wanted to touch and create on was a customizer software. So what we found in, when we were setting up these systems in schools was that a lot of kids did not have the CAD experience needed to customize parts quickly and effectively. So we created a browser-based customizer tool that allows users to log on without any software and parametrically change dimensions of our specific parts. And I'll get into what our ultimate vision is with that later on in the presentation. But those are the three items that with our Kickstarter campaign we said, you know, we could really make the core of what we have uh, even, even more exceptional. So I'll explain a little bit about how the 3D Ponic systems itself works uh, to kind of give you guys a visual. So the original 3D Ponic system was a vertical drip system. And basically how it operates is that you have a reservoir, a tank at the bottom. That's where all your nutrients are in your water that feed the plant. So the difference between hydroponic gardening and traditional gardening is that when the plant is rooted in the soil, the roots are spending so much energy finding nutrients in the soil in order to convert that into growth in the, of the plant. But when those nutrients are given to the plant directly, and the plant no longer has to seek out nutrients in the soil, that energy expansion is converted into growth. So what we see is that the plants grow faster, they grow stronger, and the fruits of the plant are more abundant. So with that in mind, so we have the reservoir at the bottom, and it's powered by an air pump, a basic air bubbler that you can use for a fish tank. And we chose this because it's, first of all, it's five watts, costs fractions to operate. You could hack it to uh, connect a solar power uh, panel to it. And the air bubbler connects into a 3D printed conduit or a venturi. And this is a, a design that we created that allows the air to push one drop of nutrient filled water all the way up to the top of the system. And because it's pushing air, it allows one drop at a time, which is perfect, so you're not overwatering or saturating the plants. And it drips into the first pod, which is a recyclable two-liter bottle of pop cut in half. And it's connected with a drip nozzle that's 3D printed. And that drip nozzle connects to the next bottle, which connects to the next bottle, and then recycles back into the reservoir. So once you have it set up, and you hang it in your window using natural sunlight, you don't need to worry about the plant anymore. So what we have is a very functional vertical hydroponic system that utilizes recyclable components, parts that we probably have lying around at home, and practical use of 3D printed pieces. And best of all, it actually works. So it's not just a theoretical gimmick. Uh, these are examples of some of our friends who set them up in their windows. And you can see they have uh, what looks like a coat rack, and they've just hung the bottles off of and, it's, and, and they work exceptionally well. And some of these were grown uh, beginning in the middle of winter in Canada, just using natural sunlight. So we know that the idea works. We know that the gardening principles are, are at work, and we see that people are you know, interested, excited about the prospect of doing something practical with a 3D printer. And the reason behind 3D Ponics becoming or rooting itself in open source ideology is that we believe that innovation is accelerated through the open exchange of ideas. That having that open exchange allows for the systems, the people to evolve and grow together. Through this open exchange of ideas that we've encouraged, we have a number of different types of hydroponic systems now available. So not everyone wanted that atrocious looking vertical hydroponic system. Some people wanted something that was more practical, they could just fit on their windowsill. So we've created non-circulating hydroponic systems and even miniature systems for herbs that you can put in your kitchen window. All these again work on the principle of requiring 3D printed parts for them to work. Uh, one question that we get very often is, uh, you know, what material do you use to, to print? Is it ABS, PLA? At, at the current time, we're using PLA. Uh, it has very little 
uh, effects in terms of leaching chemicals into the nutrients. We haven't noticed any change or degradation in the nutrient quality, just been exceptional. Uh, the degradation of the material itself has been minimal and easy to replace. So this is an example of uh, the 3D Ponics mini system, which is just uh, a dual-ended <coughs> threaded connector that allows you to connect two um, bottles. And then you have your primary top bottle that has the plant, the growth medium, and then your drip reservoir at the bottom. Following that same principle, we created the non-circulating drip system using uh, all three printed components. So you have your bottle that sits on top and allows gravity to push the water into the reservoir container. Those little basket pods are 3D printed. That's where you put your seedlings inside of. Inside the bucket or container is a 3D printed floater, just like, a, like your toilet uses to regulate when the water gets released. So once the water and the nutrient water evaporate, it will release more water from the reservoir bottle on top. So just neat variations on a basic system that we created. And these ideas are not our own. That's the beauty of it. So someone who uh, downloaded and created the original hydroponic system said, you know, we could do something better. <laughs> we could do something different. And we've encouraged it. And we've encouraged them to put it up on their store or put it up on our site for free downloads. So far, our community website has over 6,000 active members and it's, uh, you know, pun intended growing. And what we want to see is, we want to see more people being involved in creating new ideas and systems. One example of a company in Spain that took our basic idea and turned it into their own business. So, well, Facil, uh, my apologies for Spanish uh, diction, uh, they created uh, their own company based around the basic 3D Ponic system. They made it a little bit more aesthetically appealing. They used nice uh, wood framing, nice, nice string, and they, they've added uh, connector pieces to assemble everything together. And with our company, we have no uh, patents on this. We don't, for this system, we don't believe in that necessarily. What we want is people to kind of come up with their own ideas and share the information. And essentially, the end result for us is we want the general collective to come up with an effective gardening system that can be used anywhere. So we see companies develop new projects, new ideas, their own versions of our kits, and we see them offering services and sales of the, of the products and systems. And with us, we don't see anything wrong with that. We encourage it greatly, because we believe that that open exchange of ideas is great. At the same time, we also believe that proprietorial ethics kind of stalls innovation and evolution. So for us, open source is really key. We believe that open source is a smart and sustainable path to help people grow. Not always just companies, but we're people-oriented. We want to see individuals grow, groups of people grow, and more importantly, our schools grow. And that's uh, our next point. So when we got into this and we started uh, going to maker fairs and other trade shows, people saw the idea. They saw the benefit of the idea, but they asked the big question, OK, you know, where does the money come from? How do, how do you guys make your cash? And uh, with us, we saw that education was a potential stream. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we saw that a lot of 3D printer makers want to get their printers into schools because there's a lot of boom about it. And a lot of schools and teachers want to get 3D printers into their classrooms and start integrating this as part of their new science or technology programs. The big issue is that they need that justification for the cost. They need a curriculum. They need something that they can actually put together that will factor in different spectrums of the educational sector. And with us, uh, we thought that education would be a great way of merging the two. So by taking the basic hydroponic or 3D ponic idea and connecting with 3D printer makers, when we implement a curriculum into a school, we become the link between the school and the supplier of that printer or hydroponic nutrient. And off every transaction of sales, we just middleman that, uh, that percentage. So with uh, 3D Ponics, we've been collaborating with schools uh, definitely in Canada, since that's our home base, but also here in the United States and Europe to get our system into schools as part of an ongoing curriculum. As I mentioned earlier, we are working with the Rhode Island STEM Center to make this into a more uh, 
cohesive and robust program. But we firmly believe that 3D Ponics is, is a really great way of learning some key educational components, especially in the STEM category. So when you look at the 3D Ponics system, it really encompasses science, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You have all sorts of different subjects neatly grouped into one. So uh, when I was in school, I believe it or not, had no interest in technology whatsoever. So I was a Boy Scout, I was into Jiu Jitsu, I was into being outside 24 7 and making my parents you know, sick, crazy with wondering where I was. So in school, I had no interest in video games or computer games or anything like that. And I think about how maybe the tables may have changed uh, nowadays, where kids are maybe more interested in technology and less interested in things like the outdoors or self-sustainability or eco-friendly products, etc. So this becomes an interesting way, uh, in our minds, of getting someone who may not be interested in one particular subject interested into another. So some kid that may be really technologically inclined and interested in that particular subject would then learn about uh, hydroponics or aquaponics or indoor gardening or self-sustainability through that mutual application of the two. And what uh, we like to see is kids coming up with their own ideas. And I'll show you some examples of a classroom in Canada that we implemented the system in and what they ended up doing. So the, uh, the teacher actually met us at a Maker Fair in Canada, loved the idea and said, you know what, I have this rep rap at home, I want to bring it to my school, the school will let me because I got nothing to teach the kids uh, anything on, so I think this will be great. So we, we brought our system into the school, we showed kids everything, and we gave, them an, uh, we gave them a project. We said, if you guys could come up with a business around uh, this system, uh, you know, we'll give you money. So we kind of created a micro entrepreneurship program. And we know that nothing motivates uh, young teenagers more than money and girls. So we um, did whatever we could to get them interested. And we really didn't think that it would take off. But through this program, the school got all sorts of funding in order to get new 3D printers, get uh, other programs and other uh, components. And they went to town with it. And the school and the school board uh, have been blogging and tweeting about it regularly. And our basic system for them turned into a bigger vision. And their next plan is to come up with their own greenhouse in order to grow their own food, in order to supply their own cafeteria. So we could see that sometimes a small idea uh, could really ignite something massive in people's minds. So our basic system turned into this for them. So when we went a couple months after we implemented the program, we didn't expect to see what they actually came up with. Uh, it was incredible. And every classroom that we've gone into to uh, showcase or implement the 3D Ponic systems, they've all taken this type of evolution. They've taken something very small, they've made it into something very grand, and the vision expands as well. And for us, we see that as being a success. That's all we want, is we want to see this innovation and evolution, not only in our systems, but also in the concept of thinking outside the box. So when you get a 3D printer, you know, what's the first thing that we do? We, first of all, we try to figure out how it works, and then we go to Thingiverse or a similar site, we download the coolest looking toy that suits our particular interests, and we print it out. And that's cool. That's like, that's super cool. That's how we started. That's what we got us interested in. But how can you take it to the next level? How can you think outside the box? How can you make, uh, get use out of this printer? How can you get your money back? Through our involvement in schools, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we talked about uh, kids wanting an easier way to customize parts. You know, we got a lot of emails and, and, uh, from students saying, you know what, uh, we just want to be able to take this one piece that you have the trip nozzle and just make it a little bit bigger, but we don't know how to do that in, in CAD or SolidWorks and it's just a little complicated. So we thought, you know, how can we make this easier for people? How can customization of STL files or CAD files become easy? for anyone. And uh, so we have a browser-based uh, app and anyone could try it if you guys want. You just go to 3dponics.com, there's um, an app section on our website. And basically it allows you to, in real time, on your phone or on your tablet or on your, your browser, 
change the dimensions and height and depth of uh, our particular files at this point. You're able to change them in real time, and you're able to save them as new STL files and send them to print right away. We believe that customization of STL files in an easy, quick fashion will be crucial in that next part of 3D printing, which is making it more accessible and easier to use for everyone. So we're, we're doing what we can on, on that front uh, by, by creating our own software. Uh, in addition to the actual software itself, which is super easy to use, does not take up any or very little memory resources on your computer, super quick, uh, we're adding collaboration uh, aspects into the tool as well. So one student could invent, invite his other friend to join on board from different computers and they could both in real time change and alter the shapes of their files. The end result for us will be to auto-integrate every SCL file. So uh, you could automatically upload any file, it will auto-grade itself into the customizer suite, and then you're able to go to town with it as you see fit. We always want to allow people to take something basic and make it into something exceptional. And 3D Ponics is based around that notion of wanting to just give people a seed and allow them to nurture it and let it grow to something much bigger than they thought was possible. And we encourage everyone here to uh, think outside the box when it comes to 3D printing, to think outside the box when it comes to indoor gardening, think outside the box when it comes to our relationships with each other. And we encourage everyone to grow together with us. So if you have any questions about what 3D Ponics is doing uh, and how you can be involved, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you for listening.